Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online lessons and courses. So if you're on your journey as a double bass player and you want to learn something new, you're looking for some inspiration, please go and check out our website. We've got a range of courses and uh, video lessons, interviews like this one with the great Jason Heath. So welcome, Jason. It's fantastic to have you here today. Jeff, it's great to be here. I've had such a great time working on these courses and I just what you do here is so valuable to the bass community. So thank you and I'm honored to be a part of it. Well, I, Jason and I have been friends for a long time, but I actually feel like I've known you for even longer because of the amount of time that I've spent listening to you uh, on Quantum Bass Conversations. So I was hoping that today we could maybe have a little chat about how you got started with it, um, some of the key things that you've learned, and some of maybe some standout guests that kind of come to mind. So, I mean, how many episodes are you up to now, Quantum Bass Conversations? Uh, we're approaching 700. So I started wow. it in 2007. So as we're recording this, that was, what, 13 years ago? Oh, who were some of the earlier uh, podcast guests? Because in my mind, I've got Francois Rabat as being one of the very first. I, I remember listening to one about Francois. I'm, I'm a big fan of Leon Bosch. I remember uh, listening to Leon and being really excited. Who who were some of the early guests and how? Yeah, I'm asking you a lot of questions. Maybe so stick yeah. with that. <laughs> no, no. Well, so yeah, it's crazy. The Francois Raboff story I'll share. So I started yeah. this podcast. I was thinking about it in 2006. I, I loved podcasts. They were relatively new at that point. So I started this off, and it was just me talking into microphone, hoping that I'd have a guest. And within the first couple of weeks, someone reached out to me who was going to be hosting Francois Raboff in Chicago, where I was living at the time. And he said, Francois, I would love to chat with you for this new podcast. So I thought, like, how the heck did Francois Francois Raboff, A, hear about my podcast, and like, who am I to be chatting with him? And I, I meant for years to write a blog post called Tacos with Raboff, because we, we, we went out for tacos, ate some tacos, and then I went and I brought like this, what seems like Stone Age gear at the time. I had some sort of like weird little microphones, and it sounded like I'm recording from the 20s, but it was still, it was a total honor. And early on, also a, a wonderful friend of mine that ended up co-hosting a lot of these podcasts with me, John Grillo. He, he, Excellent. I love yeah. his questions. You two really complement each other really well, like, you know, in the in the episodes. Yeah, it was fun. And John knew everybody in the bass world. So what I faced at first was uh, I would ask people to chat with me and they say, who are you? What's a podcast? And why should I be on it? Yeah. But John was monumentally helpful in, in uh, making introductions and chatting with people. So within the first year, I think I had most of the principal bassists of major orchestras in the United States on, and it spread beyond the United States. And I found myself talking with so many people from all over the world. And were you were you thinking originally that this was going to be a podcast that was about classical double bass only or was it about the double bass in a wider setting? Because I know you've you've interviewed people from all genres and, and backgrounds. Yeah, well I, I had no idea what it was going to be. I was just hoping that I would be able to keep doing it every week. I, and <laughs> and it uh, it took on a life of its own. Quickly people started recommending people and so I, I go down all kinds of rabbit holes and, and deep dives into various topics. So I think I've talked with people from just about every genre, from, from uh, uh, bluegrass to uh, uh, contemporary experimental music to rock to, I mean, I'm going to be chatting with uh, Rob Trujillo from Metallica really? coming up here. Huh. And, and does, does, does he play double bass? Uh, he plays electric bass, but that's, close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. That's, yeah. that's fine. So I have learned so much in the process and I've had all sorts of crazy adventures doing the podcast and highs and lows. And it's really, it's, it's been an education for me. So, so who are the, some of the standout people? Because whenever I'm uh, thinking about uh, a new player that I'm into, so I'm, I'm thinking I want to listen to some Christian McBride or Juan Carter or Leon Bosch or mm -hmm. Francois Rabat, I Google them and I always find an episode. You know, mm -hmm. like who are some of the maybe the standout, I mean, maybe not the most famous necessarily, but who are some of the standout ones that you can, you can think about, uh, think back to? Well, one, and, and it is a big name in the bass world, there was a real pleasure just in all ways, the way that came together was Gary Peacock. So Gary Peacock was coming out with a new album and uh, what, when was this? This was this. This was I, I want to say twenty seventeen. Yeah, uh, or around there. Oh, maybe. Really? Yeah, I think it was. It was. I think it was late twenty seven. I could be wrong on that, okay. but somewhere vaguely around there. Maybe early mm. twenty eighteen. Um, so Gary was coming out with a new album, and his publicist was just sending like a, a fairly generic email out, and I replied to it, wow. and I said, "Hey, maybe <laughs> Gary wants to be on the podcast." And she replied and said, "He's down." So what I did, and this is what I love about the podcast and the community element, is I went on my podcast uh, Facebook group and I said, hey, 
Gary Peacock's going to be on the show. What do you want to hear? And a hundred comments later, I had a lot of topics and I sent that out to my email list and another hundred or so comments. So I had all these, and I had things I wanted to ask, but I was able to ask questions from the base community, including the then president of the International Society of Bases, Nicholas Walker. I led with his question. And then Gary is such a deep person and has thought so much about, about base and spirituality and all these different things that, that the, we just went in the most outstanding directions. I remember Gary singing bebop tunes to me during the wow. interview. And so that was just that was just such a satisfying moment. Uh, another one I'll share quickly is I went and I've, I've had so many. I've done live shows and, and that kind of thing. I did and one of these which which really stands out to me was chatting with 25 double bass luthiers at the same time. And I had no idea how this would work, but I went to the Oberlin Bass Workshop. All these luthiers from around the world come together and they talk shop. They make slide shows and present thoughts on wood was one of the, the presentations I saw. And it's just so interesting to see these people that are making these instruments sharing their knowledge and come and so again I knew I was going to be doing this chat so I put out a question what do you want some of the world's top luthiers what do you want to know and boy it was great I think we called it luthier rant um, so I had all these people I had my recording gear we were on this giant long table together and I had questions the community had questions the luthiers had things they wanted to bring up and that was one of the most uh, fascinating kind of multi-dimensional ones and let me share one more briefly um, I also at the, the wonderful bassist uh, at UT Arlington, Jack Unziker, he had the idea to create a college advice for auditioning seniors episode. I don't remember exactly what we called it, but I put out the question to Tim Cobb from Juilliard, principal bass of the New York Philharmonic, Oren O'Brien uh, from the New York Philharmonic, again, uh, basses from all, all over, Matthew McDonald from the Berlin Philharmonic. I had about 25 people uh, answer these questions that were submitted by a high school senior. So she asked 10 questions, and all of these people from all over the world gave her advice on what repertoire to play, uh, uh, managing performance anxiety, how to pick a school, conservatory versus university, and manage to amalgamate this all together. I remember editing this thing. I had something like 50 tracks of audio at the same time. But projects like that, I think, are really, really uh, interesting and valuable. So those are some high points. Well, we'll be providing links to those below, because I need to go and check out these episodes. <laughs> Particularly, the, I mean, the last one that you described, it's just such a creative way to connect with everybody. And is there something that you could think, you think that, you've that you could share with us that you've learned from interviewing all of these wonderful and talented people from all over the world that are doing so much great music. Is there is there a kind of theme that you come back to or uh, maybe you could speak a little bit on that? Yes, there's one very clear theme. Go on. And anybody in jazz or classical, and, and, and if you look at somebody from the outside, especially somebody that you think of as successful, you might imagine that it's a nice and neat and tidy progression. Uh, whether it's someone getting an orchestra job or someone uh, becoming a, a jazz artist or you know, whatever genre you're in. And everybody I've talked to, it's the same general theme. I had no idea what I was doing. I flailed about randomly. I had some lucky break that I blew. Then I had another lucky break and it kind of worked. And then something bad happened. And then something happened. I guess I'm here now. So the path is much more circuitous for everybody. And I think taking the long view and really just thinking about what gets you going in the morning uh, and, and what you go to bed thinking about, the people that really follow that path, they've made it work. Whether it's I want to set my base on fire, not literally, but something almost that far and, and do it. there are people doing the most uh, cool, crazy things with the double base and, and you'd never think that's not going to be a career. Well, it is a career for some people. So people make it work and, and it's amazing what you can do in music, on this instrument, if you really do follow that thing that excites you and, and take a long view and don't get discouraged by all the, all the things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's great advice. And just to finish off, why don't you give us a couple of people that you still want to have? Who is it that uh, you haven't had on the podcast that you'd really like to include? Yeah, Edgar Meyer. Oh, uh, hello, I, Edgar. I, 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 we've we, we've chat. It's it'll happen. It'll yeah. happen. It hasn't happened yet. It'll happen. Um, oh boy, there are so you know there are so many people, and this is why I'm trying to connect, especially with the older generation. There are so many people that have passed on that I wish 
I'd had on the podcast, and even in recent years, and and I've had guests that have passed away, and I'm just so glad that they that that I had the chance to chat with them. So really connecting with the older generation is is so uh, so uh, important. Somebody else, and it's going to happen. We've talked about it. it just hasn't happened. Is, is Richard Hartshorn Dobbs? He's known as Dobbs. Goes around and plays concerts in in prisons all over the world and in war torn areas. He is right now as we are chatting in Afghanistan with his base. And on Facebook are photos of him with his base going to Afghanistan, getting off, playing. He just did a concert at Carnegie Hall playing all six Bach cello suites. Someone who clearly marches to the beat of his own drum and yeah. in the most beautiful way and changing lives. So Dobbs and Edgar Meyer. Wow. Well, it's, it's my, I mean, I've had a blast following along. I've been listening right from the beginning back in 2007 when you put those early ones out and you had a bit of a break and came back. And it's uh, such a great resource for the double bass community. So, yeah, thank you so much for what you do. I'm sure everybody else listening will be wanting to pass on those same, uh, same regards, Jason. It's a, really, uh, it's a really great thing that you've achieved. Keep on doing it. Keep on sharing them. And thank you so much for being with us today to discuss this with Jason. We'll see you next time. Thank you.